Walsh with me tonight. This is our monthly live interactive class. If you are part of our online worship community at Into the River, it's our live interactive class that we do every month. And we have Sabrina. Um, we are both on staff at the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center in Santa Maria, California. Um, Sabrina uh, heads up the prophecy teams uh, and also a big, I mean, really heads up the healing. Yeah, part of the team. The healing teams. And plus, she's just my really good friend. <laughs> I know. This is fun. It is fun. And so I just thought that I, I would kind of pick your brain a little bit okay. on prophecy. And I want to hear some of the amazing healings that you and Graham have seen at just at the healing rooms and even over the last five years because uh, we moved here i moved here april of 2015 and you came like a year later a year later yeah but if you're just getting on facebook um do me a favor press your share button this is going to be a good night um if you're on youtube i'm real excited i got my phone uh, where'd i put it i put my phone somewhere right there it here. is uh, okay uh, if you're on youtube um you won't be left out because i'm going to kind of go back and forth and i like to say don't scroll and roll we do want to minister to some people but um uh tell me just a little bit because i know you but for people that don't know you what you guys how long you've been here what you did in kansas city okay yeah in kansas city um before that we lived in new zealand and when we got saved we got saved into a church where the pastor was very apostolic but his main gifting in that was um, prophecy and deliverance and he had authority for both so when we got saved that's the church we went into and that's what we learned and so when we came over to Kansas City to join the House of Prayer there, we ended up being part of the team that started the prophecy teams mm -hmm. and then um, the healing teams. And the prophecy teams were awesome because in um, the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, it's international. So you had people from all over the nations come and some spoke English and some didn't. And so you learned very quickly how to communicate what God wanted with someone without, you can speak in English, but you want them also to catch the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, so we learned a lot of things on not what to do, but mm -hmm. a lot on how to do it. And I think with prophecy, the biggest thing is that what everyone is looking for is, does he know them? And does he like them? Mm -hmm. It's all about them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And so if you can sit in a room and prophesy and you can be accurate, you can really, you know, read someone's mail, but if it isn't with the intimacy of your own life coming through and they don't feel the love of Jesus, to me, it's just another word. Yeah. And um, so for many of you who are prophetic people, because the Lord really is raising up prophetic people right now that I believe the biggest um, foundation of prophecy is intimacy with him, getting to know him, and then you get to tell others what he says about them. So it begins and ends in intimacy. That's good. And I feel like that, you know, learning to prophesy, um, I love what uh, this guy said, Larry Kreider. He, I met him at a conference and he said, not everyone is apostolic no not everyone is apostles but we're all called to be apostolic and he said not everyone walks in the office of a prophet but we're all yeah. called to prophesy and it, especially in these days and they just keep getting crazier yeah. and crazier that just to be at the store we can actually be the mouthpiece of the Lord. And uh, it doesn't have to be a, thus saith God. Uh, it just Not is very simple. But I just wanted to pick your brain. And let me say again, uh, hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello to my Into the River 
are people, if you're watching on uh, either Facebook or YouTube and you are part of my Into the River community, go to your email and click on that Zoom so you can join us. And in about 30 minutes, we're going to open it up so you can ask any questions to Sabrina that you would like. Um, but uh, we're going to go back and forth uh, tonight uh, as far as uh, YouTube and Facebook and just interact with our audience. So don't scroll and roll, stay, uh, stay with us. But I wanted you to give us three, maybe three bullet points on prophecy. Well, number one, the, the foundation really is intimacy, intimacy and our own personal walk with God and in the word. Right. But what would you tell someone that wants to grow in it or is brand new? New and and I think the biggest thing is communication with the Lord. And so the Lord will either speak to us um through pictures or you just have a knowing and instead of being one to just say what you saw is asking the Lord for language mm -hmm. and what pictures you see. And um, I actually was on a prophecy team this morning and a lady came in and as soon as she walked in the door, I saw over her the name Mary. And I'm thinking her name's Mary. Mm -hmm. I'm such a know-it-all. So she sits down, her name isn't Mary. I'm so mad oh. because <laughs> her name um, was something very different. Mm -hmm. And so I'm there and I'm about to prophesy over Mary who's not Mary. And so I've learned to ask the Lord, I saw Mary. There was no denying it. What is Mary? Mm -hmm. And the Lord straight away talked about Mary being one who sat at the feet of mm -hmm. Jesus. And that this woman is one who is devotionally um, set apart for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And even as I started saying that, she starts weeping. Wow. So Mary was the name to help me dig more. But if I sat down and said, I know you just said your name was Suzanne, but it's actually Mary. Um, it's weird. So I asked the Lord because he wanted to give me heads up because he knew I'm a bit slow. Mm -hmm. And so I think dialogue with the Lord and ask for language. Um, and again, even with pictures, um, ask the Lord. I saw, I saw a um, prophesied over a man yesterday in India, actually, last night. In India? Yep. And um, early hours of the morning. So I was wow. prophesying over him and I saw him um, jumping in a puddle and throwing a tantrum. And I'm like, Lord, what is this? And um, so Graham prophesied over him. And then it was my turn. And I felt the Lord say that he has childlike faith, but he's frustrated in the situation he's in. Mm -hmm. And so I just said to him, I see you standing. And he said, I've, I've just done that. I stand oh, wow. in the puddles and I jump and I yell because I'm so frustrated. He'd be 30 something. And he said, it makes me so mad because I don't get what I want. And wow. he was talking about the Lord. And so I saw a picture, but I gave it to him in such a way where there was an out for him. It wasn't embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Lord saw me do that. Wow. And I said, obviously, he told, and he was more excited that the Lord saw him throw a tantrum in a puddle of water. I don't think he heard another thing I told him. Because he said, he knows me. Wow. I said, and you live in India. Oh, that's good. And No, it was I mean, it's awesome because we really want to know in the amongst everyone, when he looks over the balcony heaven or he inclines his ear, are we on his radar? Yeah. And the one way we often find out is by answered prayer, which is often mm -hmm. through prophecy or through healing. That's really good. Now, let me ask you, because you get this picture of a man yep. jumping in a puddle and you can tell he's frustrated. Um, what made you, like, did you have a dialogue with the Lord about more of it or did you just tell it to him? Like, how did you know, like he was frustrated or like, it wasn't something like he has a trouble with anger or, right. Um, um and I did, I asked the Lord and I saw the picture. I had a few seconds because it was my turn to prophesy. And, um, so I'm saying, God, why is he jumping in a puddle? Why are you showing me number one? And why is he standing in a puddle? And straight away, I felt the Lord say, he's frustrated mm. with me. And I'm like, wow. with you? He said, yeah, he's frustrated with me. Mm -hmm. And so when I said that, that, he's like, he saw I'm frustrated with him. And instead of like 
I don't know, I might have been a little embarrassed or what. The guy's like, he saw me. I'm frustrated wow, with him. I love it. And he, he saw it. He's so proud that the Lord saw him. And um, and then we were able to encourage him on, uh, you know, the answers coming, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, again, it's just learning to dialogue. If the Lord gives you a picture, he knows the answer. Mm -hmm. Have you ever got a picture when you were prophesying to anyone and you just didn't understand what it meant? Yeah, and when I get pictures like that, I don't give them. Oh. I normally don't um, unless I have... That's good wisdom. Right. If I know it's from the Lord. Like, I've been doing this for years. Yeah. So if I got a picture and didn't understand it, I would probably walk, talk about the picture to the person and give it. Even if I have a not a lot, but when I was really new, I didn't. And I tell you why. This young boy was in our prophecy team um, in Kansas City. We had some students, and he was on my team, and it was his turn to prophesy. They're all learning, and we had a young girl in our room, two sisters. And he looks at her and he says, "I see you as a dead red rose, <laughs> rose on the side of the road." Mm. And I'm like, "Okay, is there anything else?" He said, "No." She's just dead on the side of the road, and she looks like a red rose. I wanted to throttle him. Oh. And I'm like, so as a leader, your job is to clean up. Right. And you want him to keep prophesying. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking the Lord, what, what does all that mean? And straight away, it was that John 15, that the Lord had pruned her. Wow, and that's good. Yeah, and that... Um, and Did I, you know that? Like, was it a knowing that I, you just... I just said, Lord, you've got to rescue him yeah. and the poor girl. <laughs> yeah. And so straight away, John 15, so I, I quote John 15, I read it, and I and as I'm doing it, I'm realizing that he's cut away a branch and it represented red rose. I said, I, I believe there's a relationship you've been in, and what the Lord's doing is he's just cut it away. She's sobbing. Wow. And her boyfriend had just broken up with her and she was grieving. Mm -hmm. But w the way it was presented to her, she knew it was the Lord. Everyone told her it's the Lord. He's not good for you. The Lord's going to bring him away from mm -hmm. you. Wow. And then if that young boy never said a dead rose, I probably never would have gone and said, help me to get mm -hmm. out. So that's the value of team. We never, I never prophesy on my own. And that's the value of team is that... You're there to help each other out. Mm -hmm. And it's good to springboard off people. But I always remember that day, that poor boy. But he was so confident. And I'm looking at him, he said, no, that's all I heard God tell me. And he was correct. Wow. And later I said, could you not have done something else with it, like delivered it easier? He said, I just told her what I saw. She was dead oh, wow. on the side of the road, a dead road. So what if... Um, because I was on your prophecy, right. it, like I, my mentor is <laughs> Sabrina and, and I think that we use prophecy in everything. We, we use prophecy in worship. Yep. I mean, like in the midst of worship, you can get a picture. Yep. We, we use pro, we can use prophecy in our everyday life because God wants to reach the world and he will use every available yes yep. to do it. Um, but one thing I learned, which is so good at the beginning, because Sabrina and Graham were over the prophecy teams in Kansas City. If you ever went to one of the One Thing conferences uh, that they did every year, yeah. like 20,000, they were lot. over all the prophecy rooms, trained everyone to prophesy uh, all through that season, right. and then we got them here, which is awesome. But one thing I learned, especially if you're by yourself, because right. if you're prophesying by yourself and all you get is a picture of a right. dead rose, it's not going to go well. you got to have team. Yeah. Um, but also, if God shows you, like, what do you do with a negative word? Right. Then the Lord, if he ever gives you a negative word, I ask him, What's the answer to it? Mm -hmm. What is the answer to the negative word? And, um, you know, I've often told the story of the young girls in Kansas City. There were three of them. They were students and they were prophesying over a couple and then a young a man on his own dressed in a business suit. And he's sitting there and the team leader of the young girls, all she knew is that he was unclean and he is in pornography. She knew because she knew. And the other girls knew, but you can't tell them that. Yeah. You cannot tell them. 
tell him that and um it's time to prophesy and she's a leader and so she said to the lord this is what i see what's your answer wow and he said psalm 24 that i created him mm -hmm. a pure heart and clean hands wow. and she's saying to him that's not what i see mm -hmm. and he's saying that's who he is wow. so she said i have one scripture she starts reading it out of her bible to him and um she knew it was the lord because she didn't know the scripture she's looking mm -hmm. and he said psalm 24 so she's wow. looking for it yeah. And he starts sobbing and he falls to the ground and he just starts wailing and crying. Mm. And um, so she just waited. And I've always taught them when in doubt, stay out. Yeah, It's God, leave yeah. God to it. And later on, he left, thank you for the word. And we got an email about six weeks later that he'd been in pornography and really addicted to it for like 20 years. Mm. And he'd been through counseling and all of that does work and he couldn't get set free. And someone said, if you go and find someone somewhere who prophesy the word of the God, the word of the Lord will go forth and not return void and you'll find deliverance. So he came and sat in front of young girls. He didn't know who was gonna be in the room. We never asked them what they're there for. And he was vulnerable before the Lord and the Lord delivered him. Wow. I love that. Isn't it? And I mean, the girl, I said, you did so well. She said, I didn't know what to do, except you told me to always ask God, mm -hmm. what is your answer to something negative? Right. Because prophecy should always be, it's 1 Corinthians 14, yep. to edify, Bye. to encourage, and to exhort. Yep. Um, can you give us some other examples? Like, uh, because I, I think that I come across that a lot. Right that um that you you know people just like what do i do with this right. i mean i see this but you and i think also we um you know when people come in especially in kansas city because there were so many different mm -hmm. nations coming and we had such a different variety of culture around the house of prayer that they come in and it's so easy to want to prophesy what they're wearing mm -hmm. and to prophesy the color of they've got um, you know, purple hair, so therefore they're in rebellion. Oh, really? And now, I, if somebody has purple hair to me, I'm thinking, because I love purple, and I'm thinking, there's revelation. Right. You've got revelation See, all no. around your mind. <laughs> and then, um, and we would find this mainly at the One Thing Conference, mm -hmm. when they all the youth groups would come, they're away from their parents, and, you know, they stop on their way down, they color their hair, you know, they're just wild. Yeah. And it's exciting and God's moving. Mm -hmm. And then they'd come and sit down for prophecy. And it was so easy for our younger ones to look and want to, you know, they're covered in tattoos. So all of a sudden judge them. Oh. And it's how do you prophesy what God's heart is for them, not what's on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a skill that we are learning as um, dark gets darker and light yeah. gets lighter of again or I always ask the Lord who do you say they are because yeah, my good. opinion some people sit in front of me and I've got an opinion for them uh, and it isn't God it's the mother <laughs> yeah I've, I've been on the yeah. other but yeah we do the same we're really good friends yeah so, we so I'm the them. mother and want to sort them all out and help them and um, it's not my job mm -hmm. so I'll say to the Lord who do you say they are and or what season are they in? Mm -hmm. And when he tells me, I tell them, and what it does is it shifts everything I'm thinking about them. Because mm -hmm. we all say we don't judge, but I think as you're a mum and you get older, you have a little niche in mm -hmm. you. And so again, the Lord knows and asking him, who, who did you create them to be? You formed them in their mother's womb. You put destiny, what's their destiny? Yeah. And he knows, and it's just hearing what he's saying and being confident. And that's why it's so good to be on teams mm -hmm. and um, to exercise the gift of prophecy. The more you use it, you get confident with the way he talks mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, that's a big key. Yeah. Um, what in, in all of your years of training, has there been like a couple, you know, things that is just right up at the peak, like, oh, this was just incredible when the Lord gave you just information or, um, I mean, the, the rose one is beautiful. Oh, the but... rose one's beautiful. Um, 
Yeah, I remember a young girl coming in for prophecy and she's sitting there and she's laughing with a friend and they're really happy. And um, But I see as I'm looking at her, because I often will see things, I'm seeing behind her, I knew it was her mother and I knew her mother had just passed away. Oh. But it didn't match with mm -hmm. the girl. And so it's a word of knowledge. Mm. And often, um, I, I'll i often get a word of knowledge because what you want to do is to, for people to receive prophecy, often if you have a word of knowledge and they're like, she didn't know that, God only knows that, then they pay attention. Yeah. And so I love words of knowledge. And so I saw it and I knew she'd passed away and I knew it was very frequent. Mm. And I'm like, now I'm going to prophesy, but I want to address this. Yeah. And I was just looking at her and she was young. And I, um, I just said to her, I said, the Lord took your mother, not the enemy. Wow. And she started screaming. Mm. Now, what I didn't know is her mother died from an overdose. Oh. And she, and, you know, obviously, um, you know, the enemy gives, you know, sin and sickness. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I felt the Lord say, I took her to keep her safe. Wow. And she uh, settled down, you know, came and kind of got out of it all. And she said, I don't need a word now. I know, I wanted to know, was she in heaven? Wow. That's all she wanted to know. Because oh. everyone told her, if you commit suicide, you go to hell. Now, I didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't need a word. And she was so happy because her mother was in heaven. That is, I mean. And I mean, again, it's having that heart. Um, and I think I work this way because the first time I was ever prophesied over, a lady pulled me out of a meeting and gave me um, a word that no one knew. No one knew this about my life. And what it did is I just, I left the meeting, cried all the way home. Mm -hmm. I'd just been saved a few months. And all I kept saying is, God, you know me. Wow. And it connected me to him. And it was like, I'm 100% in serving now. Because we give our hearts to the Lord. And how do you serve a God you can't see? And mm -hmm. they tell you all this stuff. But I want it authentic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, close your eyes and pray to him. Well, where is he, you know? Yeah. And um, what that did is it concreted in my heart. He's real and he knows me. Mm -hmm. And I gave 100%. And so that's always been my heart that I would make him known to people so they get a whole, a whole lot committed to him and walk in it. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Um, hey, uh, this is my friend Sabrina Walsh. We are on staff together at the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center in beautiful Santa Maria, Absolutely. California. Uh, just got rain, which is good. If you're on Facebook Live, we just want to say hello. And also YouTube, we want to say hello. On Facebook, share this. Uh, I feel like some of this information is so rich and it actually, I feel like it helps us grow in our own lives with God. Right. I mean, it's so personal. I think it's so personal that God would trust us, all of us, because yeah. we're all supposed to prophesy, um, that he would trust us with the secrets of people's heart to the point that they would have a longing to know the I Lord know, incredible. more. Yeah. And that is that is a beautiful, it's a very honorable, and it's a fearful thing right. before the Lord. And one thing I wanted to say was um, uh, years ago, one of my sons, my son, well, my son and my daughter-in-law, I won't say which one, because they're all married, but they decided that they wanted a prophetic word. Uh, I mean, they signed up for prophecy, you know, they're newly married and they go in, but my son had actually told, you know, his wife, now I don't want to, I just want to go in with a face that's like, you know, so I don't want them to be able to read right. us. Um, he goes, I'm just, we're just going to go in there and set. I just want, I want to hear from the Lord. So they go in and set down, but the way they're, they look is like they're in a fight. I mean, because, um, you know, you know, normally if you're just kind of like, you know, you got your hands. Yeah. Over. And so all they got the whole time was marriage counseling because people were Rape looking them. 
And that wasn't at all what was going right. on. And that was such a lesson to me on two ways. Number one, just you just be you, just yeah. be you. And they were, but they were just yeah. kind of rigidly themselves. But you cannot even look at that because some of the people that were ministering didn't necessarily know right. who they were. But just it, it was interesting how it was just, you know what? 15 minutes of marriage counseling right. and it it wasn't what they needed. it wasn't i mean yep. they were actually doing really good, really good. and yeah. that was a great lesson on lord what do you say not yeah. just the color right not just the hair or the tattoos or whatever not just their demeanor like you said right. about the girl who yeah. whose mother had just passed away right you said it doesn't match what i'm getting right and that really takes our our walk in god our friendship with god and that knowing no this is the lord i'm feeling it right and i re that reminds me of another story um, we had a youth group come um, during the one thing conference and we had the two leaders come in and um, they were both females and they were in the same-sex relationship so these two leaders of a youth group um, were together as partners and they came into prophecy and um, I saw them standing there holding hands and again how do you prophesy mm. over what you may have a conviction about, but you're not there for that. You're there to tell them who the Lord says That's they are. Good. And so they went into this room and I put, I put them in a room with a couple of mature people, but I didn't tell them anything. Well, these, this, these two girls are a couple, really. They go and sit down and they're holding hands, but they're not young girls where, you know, 15 year olds all hold, hold hands. These are mature women. Mm -hmm. And they may, and, um, when the leader said, have you had prophecy before, etc.," they said, yes but not together we're a couple so declared it and so anyway um the team prophesied over them and um the result was they saw them as a couple it was physical couple but they prophesied who were who did god say they were mm -hmm. and one of them just started weeping as the lord connected her heart to him mm -hmm. they ended up in a fight uh -oh. and when they left the girl who got convicted by the Lord went and got counseling to get away from that relationship. Oh, wow. I mean, and the word she got, um, the lady was talking to her about, she knew her from a mother's womb, and she started talking to her about her as a little girl, what the Lord showed her that led her into her future mm -hmm. and that the Lord had not um, passed her by. Wow never address a same-sex relationship at all but because destiny is in each one of our hearts when you give a prophetic word it will not return void and it hit her destiny and all of a sudden she realized who the lord called her to be isn't what she's doing right now and it awakened something in her heart and um i will always remember that i remember the fight yeah um, wow. yeah but just that the lord would bring them to a conference to get them one set free. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to the other one, but one got totally set free. Yeah. Um, and uh, also one question, and then I'm gonna open it up to any of our Into the River people. If you have a question for Sabrina, um, I'll have you unmute yourself in a second. Um, but how do you grow in prophecy? I mean, so you're, you want to right. grow in it and like test the limits. Like I'm going to go for the big one, but actually at the same time, you're, that probably needs to be done with a team, right? Because Definitely. I've just been with people who's like, I want to reach. And I'm like, I can't believe you said that. Right. Like yeah. I want to never, you know, well, I want to grow. How do you grow in the reach? But it's still, um, not at the um, expense right. of someone who needs to hear from the Lord. Right, and I think the way you do it is being on a team. And also, um, we'll do different exercises. Like um, last week, when we prophesy, we do it every week. I said, every word you give, I want you to start it with a scripture. 
Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know the word, you can't prophesy from it. The word is your safety. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so when look in the Bible, ask the Lord where, you know, if he says this guy's a David, where in David's life is this guy right now? We're in the storyline. And when you go back into the Bible, it makes you grow mm -hmm. and it makes you stretch. And I think be open to feedback. And um, there are times you want to risk and jump, but make sure you're with someone who's going to help you land. Right. Do you know, like that young boy, he was reaching dead roads, mm -hmm. but I was able to land him and um, he grew in it. And it was a great teaching time. I love that. And so I think team is important. Absolutely. I never prophesy alone. And um, if I'm asked, so if someone came and said, will you give me a word, da, 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 um, and say there's two people and I'm the only one prophesying, I get out my phone and mm -hmm. I record what I give mm -hmm. because I want accountability. It's mm -hmm. not that I don't trust people, but I don't want words twisted right. if I've got no one to prophesy with me. But most of the time I'll say, one moment I need to find a team player. Mm -hmm. And the amount of people who say, oh, well, then we don't want to wait. It's fine. Yeah, but I normally will find someone because it's we we just That's need really to good. have safety. Okay, one more question. What about prophesying dates, mates, and babies? Right, and we don't <laughs> do hatch, match, and dispatch. <laughs> hatch, match, and dispatch. That would be I New Zealand. That. Yeah, we don't do hatch, match, and dispatch. Um, and as you mature, I think you can throw out dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's got to be in, it depends if you in the setting. Do you know what I mean? If you're in a room and you're learning with another team member, it's different than if you're in a corporate setting mm -hmm. and you can go higher. Right. And, um, but I normally stay away from, you know, hatch, match, dispatch and dates. Dates. Yeah. yeah. And even um, when someone's pregnant, I, I see this a yeah. lot. The Lord said you're having a blah, blah, you know, right. boy or girl. Um, I've seen more people miss that right. than actually Absolutely. get it right. And it does, I mean, it doesn't really matter in the, in life because you're just going to love the baby. I mean, right. it's just about the baby yeah. and you, you have a 50, 50 chance. I know. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've seen a couple where it was a prophet of the Lord that was recognized and it was right on. Yeah. And there was healing to yeah. someone's womb. They yeah. were, uh, they could not get pregnant for like 12 years. Yeah. Um, but, but in some of the others, I've seen it really as a disaster. Yeah. Just, Dates, mates, and babies, we yeah, kind of stay, just stay away from. We just stay away from it, you know. And we had a young boy, and we even say, you know, dispatch when people will die. And we had a young man, a young boy, who was on a prophecy team, and he told this this man that he felt that he was like a Stephen, and he's going to know what it is to die prematurely for the Lord. And he gave this long word, mm -hmm. and we're there, and I'm just wanting to strangle him yeah. and stop him. And so we finish and um, someone else kind of cleaned up the word a little bit. And then as the guy left, he said, can I give feedback? And he said, my middle name is Stephen. And I've given my life to the Lord and I actually um, am a missionary in the Middle East. Wow. And I've gone over there. I'm back on furlough. But when I'm over there, I've given my life to the Lord. If he wants to take my life for the sake of others getting to know him, I'm willing to go. Wow. So he said, that word confirms what my destiny. So I said to this young guy, great, don't do it again. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> but he got it right. Mm -hmm. Well, and the key was group. Yeah, because it was, was feedback. Yeah, that's, yeah, I got a word, gosh, before, when I was pregnant with Isaac, this guy said, I heard the audible voice of the Lord, that your first baby is a girl. Oh, no. And her name's Deborah. And then your second, I, I'll never forget this because it, it was the prophecy that was so big that never happened. And I'm thankful it did. And your second one was going to be a boy named Gideon. And I was going, I would, I, those just aren't names I would choose. <laughs> right. And then he said, you're going to have seven. And I'm like, you, you are just, you just need to eat or something. There's right. something that's not getting, <laughs> but that's a dangerous thing yeah. to say thus saith the lord oh absolutely How, what do you tell people when they're beginning to prophesy do you say 
the Lord said no. or how do you? We do, because what you want to do as a team is learn how your team prophesies. So we would normally say, I feel, I sense, mm -hmm. or I hear. So like today for, you know, one of them who came in is um, when I saw the name Mary, I said, I, um, I sense that the Lord is calling you a Mary, that you're one who sits, you know, at his feet. And I know the Lord told me that, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say that because the minute you say the Lord told you, you've got them in bondage. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have that freedom to go home and weigh it up. And to me, prophecy is we give bullet points and when the person receives it, it begins a conversation between them and God. Yeah. And God wants to add to what we tell them. That's and it. if we say God said, then what it does is you're in bondage. And if, if the person's off, you feel you've got to do it. Um, but you then feel you can't ask God, what does he think? Because they just told you this is mm -hmm. what God thinks. And we want to always to be a dialogue with the Lord. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. Um, so I want to open it up. I, if any of our Into the River people have a question, let me know. Uh, think about it. Uh, but I'm if you're if you're just tuning in, I know we have Facebook and we have YouTube. Um, stay on with us. If you have a question also, if we can get to it, I would love to answer that. Um, this, uh, this is my friend Sabrina Walsh. I'm Julie Meyer. We're both on staff at the Healing Rooms uh, Apostolic Center in um, uh, Santa Maria, California. But I want to talk about really quick about a couple of your products that oh, are yeah. amazing. And this is, I don't know, hopefully it's not showing backwards, but this is Graham CD, Healing Beneath His Wings. And I got the honor of being on this too. But Graham has an incredible journey with the Lord. I actually uh, talked with him uh, some months back about right. his healing journey. And this CD is a great CD to just put on. It is full of the Word of God. It's just declarations from the Word of God. And I just kind of sing a little bit. Marie Scalar, it plays a beautiful hymn at the beginning. And it is so anointed. And, you know, Hebrews 4 tells us the Word of God is alive and full of living power. And this CD, it is full right. of declarations. And where can I get this? Um, at... I think it should be on the website, but okay. walshministries.com, easily. And Joe will share that. And also their book, T talk to us about this. Yeah, it's Christianity and Spiritual Authority. And um, just on how to walk as a Christian and spiritual authority, it says, becoming strong in the Lord and understanding the tactics of the enemy. And so Graham wrote this book. The thing I love about when Graham, who's my husband, writes books, is he writes it so we can all understand it. You don't have to get a dictionary and look up the big words because there's none. Yeah, that's and nice. so it's easy reading, but he gives you tools. Mm -hmm. Every chapter, like how to pray for your children, how to pray for your home, what spiritual authority is. We've all got it, how to walk in it. And so this here, especially in the season we're all in, this is an awesome book. How to kick butt and get the enemy out of your life. Come on. that's a, And again, that's I think we're sharing that um, on YouTube and Facebook. Yep. We're sharing that um, a link so you can get those. But get that CD. You can just put it on your in your background and just fill it your, your house, your car, your workspace with just those declarations just set to really right. simple, uh, pretty music. So um, take advantage of that. Um, did, let me ask now, does any of our uh, uh, Into the River people, does, do you guys have a question for Sabrina? If you do, just uh, raise your hand and you, okay, good. Andrew, and Andrew, just unmute yourself. There you go. Hey, Andrew. Hi. Um, yeah, I've got a question for you, Sabrina, and then you can kind of answer it any way you want to, but um, can you kind of just, let people know how you go about testing a word yeah um whatever word and i think one of the biggest things when you get a word um is most of us know straight away if it's from god or not do you know what i mean but to test a word i always weigh it up with the word of god that um it's you know that when you 
get a word that it's in the word of God, that it brings um, exhortation to Jesus, that it exhorts us to love him more, and it brings comfort to areas in our own heart. So I weigh it up before the Lord and then before the word, but also I'll take it to somebody who I'm accountable to, and I'll ask them to weigh it up with me. I will give it to them, especially if it's anything that's directional that people want to give you. You know, you're moving. You thought I don't wasn't moving. Um, anything like that, and ones who do, you know, give out dates. You can either squash them or you go and ask somebody what do they think of the word. But also just to pray and ask the Lord, and you find that as you ask the Lord, He will speak to you through the word. And I think the biggest uh, filter for testing is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you always taught me that sometimes people won't remember the word. I mean, in, yeah. in detail, but they will remember the scripture. Yep. Um, Andrew, where, where are you from? I love your accent. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Australia. Australia. I know we like the Aust we love the Australians. This is a Kiwi, right? Regardless of what everyone says. Okay, so between the Australians and the New Zealands, who really had the first meat pie? New Zealand. Ask who won the <laughs> All Blacks. Ask them about rugby would be a better question oh. this week. <laughs> anyway, um, and we're praying for you in New Zealand because <laughs> he's laughing. <laughs> Um, now, are, is New, New Zealand still on lockdown? He won't know. He's Australian. Oh, that's right. I <laughs> so meant to say. Already no, I up. meant to say Australia. Is Australia <laughs> still on lockdown? Yeah. So um, most of the well, so I'm, I live in Adelaide in South Australia, which is sort of middle of Australia on the southern coast. That's South Australia. Um, we we're not in lockdown, but. Victor on the eastern states, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland are, and I and I do know some people over in New Zealand. And I think they've got they've got lockdown there still as well. Yeah, we're in severe lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can let's pray for that too, just for encouragement and uh, the hearts of people. I know Georgianne and Winnie Banoff just did a whole facebook live for people in australia and new zealand just to encourage them and it was a it was really beautiful um so father we ask yeah. right now for um anyone in lockdown in any nation but particularly for australia right now and for new zealand father we ask that you'd strengthen their heart Father, you would show them that you're in control, that the disease comes from the enemy. And even though at times it looks that you have, it's unaware to you that you're right on target, right on time of what's going on. And Father, we ask for a gathering of the Christians to rise up and declare who you are and that you are the Lord. And Father, for anyone affected, anyone who's sick, Anyone who has relatives who are sick with COVID, we speak healing to your body right now. We break yes. the spirit of infirmity and we command healing to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's good. Does anyone else have a question? Natalie, Cindy. Uh, Sassy, I love your name. Yeah. Sassy. We like Sassy. Does anybody else have a question or? Yes, no? Um, I want to just, uh, what, what I want to do, and actually any of you that are on um, our, our uh, Into the River community, uh, I want to I minister to a couple people yeah. online. And, and as we're ministering, feel free to wave your hand if you get something for them. And because, um, uh, hey, we're in, we're in a group right we're now. We're in a group and, and we are exercising the gift of we prophecy. Are, uh, yes. And the thing about it is a lot of times, when you're with someone that is like a prophet, like Sabrina, you can actually prophesy with even more clarity yeah. because we're like under her umbrella. And I, I love that. I love being with Stacy. Right, I love yeah. being with different prophets. But um, if you're on Facebook, um, hey, uh, press your share button. This has just been a really rich 
time tonight. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, press your subscribe button so you can get anything from my ministry or a Walsh ministry, also our Healing Rooms Apostolic Center. And uh, anyway, I just want to get a couple people off Facebook Live, and I'm going to say their name, and for any of our End of the River people, um, uh, you can, if you get something, just wave your hand. But let me just uh, see if I can make sure people are on okay so let's prophesy over uh let me see k t new okay and this is on facebook so it's the it's k and it's t k t new k t so i don't i think i don't know if it's k t right. is in a guy because i can't ever see pictures why not? Uh, I, I need bifocals, I guess. So KT <laughs> new. Now, you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because normally, if I see a name like the name new, I'm like, I'm gone. And I can prophesy. Can prophesy. New. Yeah, go. Everything is new. I mean, I just, because yeah. a lot of times if I'm on Facebook Live and I, I there's so many names, I, I just can't see everybody and I never can see pictures, only names. If I my eyes land on a name, I trust I'm right. supposed to see that name. Yep. And I did. I saw KT New and I just thought of Song of Solomon 2 um, where the beloved is calling the Shulamite. If you happen to be a boy, it's okay. We're all yep. the bride of Christ. Um, and just says, come up here. I mean, he calls the uh, Shulamite away from the comfort zone of the banquet table and says, I want you to come up this mountain. And it actually is a mountain that looks like Pike's Peak or, you know, it looks, it's not just a foothill. It's a mountain. And, and the Lord is saying, come up here. Uh, the season of winter is past. Yeah. The rains are gone. It is springtime. There's new blossoms. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in the land. And I just feel like there you've been through a, a harder season, that winter season, even though we're going into winter. But the Lord is saying, come up, come up higher. Come up higher, press in deeper because there's things that the Lord wants to show you that he only can show you if you come That's up good. to where he is. Right. And I, for KT, I got um, John 14 and I really, 15, I feel that he wanted to remind you that no longer does he call you servant for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you my friend, and I feel you're going into a friendship with the Lord, like you've and going up the mountain as a friend. And I feel that it's just a coming together that um, as a friend of the Lord's, and He shares His secrets with His friends, and that no longer do you do you do stuff for the Lord as a place of serving Him, but you do it from a place of friendship, which always um, results in a different way mm -hmm. and that's really good and it reminds me of psalm 25 verse 14 out of the passion translation he says it the best there's a secret place there right. or there's a private place reserved for the lovers of god where they sit right by him receiving revelation that's right. the secrets of his promises and there's some things you know there there's some things that i will tell everybody but i will only tell a few people my deepest heart right. secrets and i think god wants intimacy yep, he so does. but katie i think this is going to be an amazing season for you and he is, he's going, Jeremiah 33, 3. And then, so, KT, you said, oh, Pike's Peak was terrible for me. Do you climb mountains? <laughs> or what does that mean? But uh, anyway, does any of you have anything that are um, watching with me now? Do you have anything for KT New? And if you don't, that's fine. I'm just inviting you to jump Join in. Join our prophecy team. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, I want to go. I want to move really quick. I want to go over to YouTube so we get some people on YouTube. Here, you you find someone from YouTube, um, and I just think this is awesome because I feel like um, 
you know, people, they, they jump on Facebook, especially when you're in lockdown. And I mean, you can actually be on it too much, but if you're going to be on it, then let's minister to people. And any one of you, like, especially any one of our end of the rivers, you could do this at any time, literally do a Facebook live and just put it on Facebook right. live and just encourage people or just pray for people. And people are hungry for prayer right now. Yeah. Um, let's prophesy over Rhonda Horde. Rhonda. Oh, I just prophesied over Rhonda Horde last night. You did? So let's see if you get it right because <laughs> I have the word of God. We have the that, word. Yes, Rhonda Horde. That's so great. Oh, that is awesome. You're, Rhonda, man, this is the one to punch. Yeah. Come on. Um, so for Rhonda, as soon as I saw you, your name, I saw you standing um, in a field, but before you got into the field, you're in like a pen. And it's like um, where the animals are held while they're being trained. And I saw at the end of the pen, the door, the um, gates slide open and the field was ahead of you. And I feel that you've been trained and you've been equipped and you've got all the resources you need. And the Lord's opening the gates for you to go out onto green pastures and that you're going to be very, very fruitful. And as you began to walk over the grass, you're like, where shall I go? And I saw the angels standing on either side of you and they had like paving stones and they were paving your way. And I feel you're going into a season of walking by faith. I feel you're going into a season of being extremely fruitful, but also a season of raising up the next generation and you turned into the Pied Piper and as you're walking you can't be a leader if no one's following but as you're walking that like the Pied Piper everyone from out of the long grass came behind you and followed you because they trusted that you'd lead them to the king that's good I just remember her name because uh, Rhonda hoarder, and I said, "You're a hoarder." I mean, but this is the it was she was a hoarder of the presence, presence of, God. of God. It's like you can't get enough, you can't get enough. So this is what you want to be. So that's so funny that, that you is so good. Up. Okay, I have another name. Uh, I went back to Facebook, and does anyone have anything? It's fine if you don't. If you do have anything for Rhonda, let me know, and you can say it. Oh. Um, Yes, Andrew. Oh, oh, Andrew has something. So unmute yourself. This is Andrew, all the way from Australia. Australia. Um, yeah, Rhonda, what I was getting was the word strength. And um, I was getting the scripture that, um, you know, some trust in, just reading it again, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we remember the name of the Lord our God. Yeah. And what I was getting was that there are times when you feel weak and that's okay because God is your strength. And in those times, they're the times to remember that the Lord is your strength. That's really good. That is really good. Andrew, that's really good. <laughs> Did you raise your hand, Cindy? Oh, okay. No problem. Um, okay, here I had another one. Let me see. Or, or do you want? No, I, you just picked one. I'm, I want a couple more. Um, okay, I, I think it's um, is it, okay. It's Linda and it's M Missler. Linda Missler. I know. So you. Oh, do you? Side. Oh, do you? I just liked it because she said, "Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Julie. God bless you both." Purple hair over here. And I, I know. Was like, Hey, I love purple Mad hair. Mad City Church when we went. Oh, really? Yeah. Is she, is she from Mad City Church? Yeah, so you was. are not mad. No, when we went up there for that conference, she was there. Yeah, I just feel like, I don't know, uh, Linda, I, I mean, I just saw that purple hair over here, and I bless that purple <laughs> hair. I think that you uh, march to the beat of your own drum, and you take a lot of flack for it, but it's the very reason that God has marked you and chosen you to do what he says to do. I feel um, Psalm 19 uh, verses 7 through 10, it talks about the, the word of God and it converts. I mean, it, it, it tells everything the word of God does to us, to our 
soul to our inner core and i feel like that you have perfectly and i feel like that word perfectly you have you have let the word of god have its perfect way in you and you have made the word of god your prize of a lifetime and i just feel like there's so much more i just get this picture you can interpret this i get this picture i don't know what you look like but i see this person riding a wild bull at the rodeo that would be her. and i just think there is nothing too crazy for you that it's like it's like heaven gets together and says we really need um someone that's really crazy for them to to do this and the lord says i've got the per the perfect person <laughs> with a purple hair and, with the purple hair and linda i feel like you are so pleasing to the lord and he loves your wildness but your wildness is not wild to god it's perfectly following after his invitation so i bless you in that so that was good that was really good all yes. right anybody else have anything i'm just i'm, I'm i like to ask uh okay let's do one more yep. Uh, yep. so let's okay let's go to let's let's finish it off with a youtube because i love going back and forth joe's got me going back and forth and let me see you're managing how well. about i know look at this what about um what about roxy spencer roxy i hope you're on is she on roxy spencer wow. she's on youtube oh okay so roxy for you i feel that um you're in that season of having had rocks thrown at you and you've dodged them and that you have been one who's walked through much betrayal and uh, much criticism but you kept your face like flint to the lord and you weren't affected by it and i feel that you're coming out with a testimony of knowing the truth of who god is but also walking in forgiveness it says in luke that those who love much those who forgive much love much mm -hmm. and i believe you're a woman who loved much and you're one that can um i saw you in a kitchen and you had all these ingredients on the kitchen counter and someone said where's your recipe and you're like i don't need a little bit of this and a little bit of that and i feel you're very creative and out of nothing you can make something and so roxy i feel the lord saying well done you responded to the rocks and the criticism well you never defended yourself you put your face as flint to me and that the creativity in you i see it exploding and i see that prophetic mantle you carry is mixed with the creativity and also i feel the lord i just saw a loaf of bread sitting on the counter that you would just baked and i feel the lord is calling you into a season of communion with him to um go into that place of deepness with god yeah okay and so when i said your name roxy i all of a sudden i heard of this i heard this song and it's a oldie and it's that song do you, do you know this one rock the boat don't rock the boat baby rock the boat don't tip the boat over okay uh did, did, did you ever know that yes. song? okay i don't even know what decade that song was in but i feel like you are one who loves to rock the boat and uh and that that can make people uncomfortable but that's why you are like a peter that you know what you will get out you yep. will god knows you will get out you will just go read that in the gospels you will get out of the boat because peter gets thrown under the bus way too much because he actually got out, out of, of the, the boat, boat and walked on the water so roxy i just feel like the lord you know when the when it's too much but um stay who you are don't ever i don't think you will i think that's why god picked you because you don't mind rocking the boat and i i just feel like you you just keep people reaching yeah. because you reach so amen that's good okay um just as we close i want to i want to have you just pray over okay. us and just release a, a prophetic uh, impartation you can put your hand on my head so no just kidding uh whoops <laughs> so that no uh, anyway um and then we're just going to give you some information about our healing rooms that i think will bless you okay so father we thank you for everyone watching 
and everyone watching on the archive, Father, we ask that you would encounter them. Father, we, it says, lay hands. And Father, as we stretch out our hands, we're asking for an increase of the prophetic that these ones carry. Father, open the eyes. Open their ears to hear you. Mm -hmm. Open their eyes to see what you're doing. But Father, I ask that you would release their voice. Father, even those right now, I just saw people sitting there with a hand around their neck. Those who've got the code of silence, I break it now. And Father, we say, let the voice of the Lord rise up and go out with accuracy, but with love. Father, I thank you for the testimony after testimony of these ones as they encourage and bring exhortation to others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, so just really quickly, let me show your... I'm here with Sabrina Walsh, who heads up our the prophecy teams. Uh, her... You have a great team of people for prophecy, a great team. You, Randy Shintaku, yeah. um, and Graham and Graham I. and you that, that head up the healing rooms. Uh, and we've just had incredible uh, testimonies of healing and deliverance out of uh, Santa Maria, California. If you are close, come to our meetings. They're Mondays at, at 6 p.m p.m. Pacific, and they're Tuesday and Wednesday mornings at 9.30. We do soaking, but they're you, online. Yeah, they're you online if you're not there, if you're not close. But if you're close, come. Yeah. And Mondays and Tuesdays, they pray for healing. And, and Wednesdays. And Wednesdays. And then Wednesdays, they also do prophecy. Right. And, and again, you can um, do healing and prophecy online. That if you go to the Healing Rooms website, and they'll put that link, yeah, up. they'll put the link up there. You click on the link, and it will take you um, to ask and set up for an appointment. And so we do Zoom and phone prophecy and healing every week. That's good, and it's good. It's, it's really awesome. good. Um, and to order any of uh, Graham and Sabrina's things, here is their, uh, and we'll put up this link. Their CD healing beneath his wings it's all scriptures scripture. just decreeing declaring the word of god and graham's book christianity and spiritual authority how to walk in the authority that the lord gave you and it's great um anyway i have a brand new book 30 days of praying the psalms we're putting that link you can also sign up for uh, bible devotionals that go hand in hand with this just to get these equipping tools that in your re hands. It's really good. It is. I it's love it. It's so good. King David's keys for victory. You know, we use Psalm 23 for everything. But if you need like a breakthrough in finance or debt, well, you got to get out Psalm 1. I mean, right. I just think let's yep. get out these tools and use them to fight our battles. Because, again, the Word of God is alive and full of living power. So, anyway, amen and amen. And amen. Um, if you... Uh, 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 bleh, now I'm going brain dead. Uh, uh, our words are powerful, so no, I'm not. Uh, but anyway, next month, our guest is Anna Warner, an oh, amazing awesome. seer. She's amazing. She's amazing. And uh, if you're not part of Into the River, uh, our online worship community, you can check it out at intotheriver.net where we are singing our way through the Psalms, doing weekly Bible studies and monthly live interactive classes right. like this. And our community can actually jump on and ask them personal questions, which is really great. And Anna's going to be amazing. Yes. So anyway, and let me see. I got, I got it right. Do I have this? Oh, hold on. I got, do I have a question? Oh, good. Cindy said, this has been so good. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate your prayers. Uh, you go to, a, okay, an indie spine group tomorrow to discuss surgery on your neck and back. What, will you just yeah. pray for healing? So then... for Cindy right now, Father, we ask for total healing for Cindy. Father, from the top of her head right down through her feet, Father, I ask that you'd bring divine alignment. Father, we break yes every curse of the enemy on her spine we break it in jesus name the trauma i break it in jesus name and we say be healed now cindy all pain go all alignment to come into divine order in jesus name amen, amen. and amen so amen and amen we will see you 
um, later, everyone will have our, uh, hopefully everyone is enjoying the Psalm 64 that has all been uploaded to our 24 seven radio. And that was a crazy Psalm to actually she, do devotions to, because it's, you know, it's really like praying for people in Afghanistan and the evil yep. that we see yep. publicly disp displayed and that God has arrows of his own. He does. Um, but anyway, amen and amen. We will see you all later and watch this again and again. Even if you're watching it later, you're going to receive. So, okay, amen. bye. Bye, everyone.